<gasps> the Happy Happy Children's Toy. Buy it for your kids, they'll sleep well. <laughs> Sometimes companies need to shake it up a little bit, so they come up with some amazing new products. The phone that changes all phones, or maybe a new fashion trend. But <laughs> not all ventures are successful. Sometimes so much is put into a new product and it fails so badly that it literally almost bankrupts a company. Here are 10 failed products that almost ended big companies. Number 10 is the DeLorean. There's a big difference between fame and success, and for proof, look no further than the DeLorean Motor Company. Founded on October 24th, 1975, the car manufacturer only sold one vehicle in its short existence, the DeLorean DMC-12 sports car, an automobile that took the standard car door design and threw it out the window in favor of a winged vertical style. Almost from the start, the company was in over its head with constant design problems with the DMC-12 MC12 and issues with the power it was able to harness being incredibly low, which is really ironic if you've seen Back to the Future. Plus, to save money, the assembly line was built in Belfast, Northern Ireland. The local workers knew little about car building. The car flopped in the American market and DeLorean closed in 1982, only to become famous due to the Back to the Future trilogy. So in this case, the failed product actually did end the company, which is too bad, because let's be honest, we'd all like to be riding around a DeLorean. Number 9 is the Edsel. Named after the son of Henry Ford who founded the Ford Motor Company in 1903, the Edsel was the car that was supposed to help the company catch up with GM in the American automotive market in the late 50s. Design for the automobile began in 1955 and it was revealed to the world on September 4th, 1957. For nearly a year before launch, Ford was making grand claims, leading the public to believe they would soon be staring at the car of the future. But when the company confidently unveiled the Edsel, many were left disappointed, claiming it was the same style as many other vehicles and overall boring. A car named Edsel that's boring? Pfft. What? After overindulging on advertising and the Edsel selling extremely poorly, Ford was left with a loss of over $250 million and a clear lesson of how not to market a product. That's like if you had a daughter named Beulah and you started a fashion line. Hey everybody, where the Beulah? No thanks. Number eight is the touchpad. Hewlett Packard used to be the name in home computing, with systems in millions of homes, and while the company is still seeing profits, their reputation took a huge dive in 2011 with the incredibly awkward release of the touchpad tablet computer. HP threw a big event on February 9th, 2011 called Think Beyond, where they unveiled the tablet to an excited crowd. However, no price or shipping date was given, leaving people confused. Instead of launching at the event, HP executives decided to hold off and work on the operating system some more. When the touchpad was finally released on July 1st, Apple's iPad 2 had already taken over the market. Only 25,000 tablets were sold, leading HP to shut down the web OS division and sell off their stock at a loss. Okay, okay guys, I just developed this thing. It's a touch screen phone. You know Samsung and Apple phones are on like their 10th version, right? You're a little late, you're stupid. Number seven is trendy fashion. What started as a jeans store in Baltimore, Maryland in 1968 grew to be one of the most iconic clothing stores in the United States through the 70s and 80s. But trying to maintain that fast growth is what ultimately led to merry-go-round closing the doors to hundreds of stores. Though the company had numerous failures, its biggest was how it lost touch with its customer base. As the early 90s brought in the grunge look, most retailers begin doing market research and adjusting specific locations to to sell what the area was looking for, but not merry-go-round. Fixating on flashy, colorful clothes worn by rappers like LL Cool J, the company tried to set the trend in areas full of people in torn jeans and t-shirts. Fast forward and after filing for bankruptcy in 1994, merry-go-round closed its remaining 536 stores in 1996 and liquidated all assets. Well, I guess more than one company on this list ended because of a bad product decision, which is too bad because that would Love to see neon clothing come back, you know what I'm saying? Got me dripping in funness. 
I'm sorry, I'll never do that again. Number six is the Dreamcast. Released in Japan on November 27th, 1998, and North American markets on September 9th, 1999, the Dreamcast was a video game system developed by Sega that, due to a number of issues and horrible business decisions, ultimately met an early demise. The design and technology inside the console was expensive, meaning to compete with the PlayStation 2, each system had to be sold at a loss. Additionally, third-party support just wasn't there, as the system was difficult to develop games for due to a flawed controller design and software issue. And on March 31st, 2001, just after two years on the market, Dreamcast was pulled by Sega and after 18 years, the company announced its exit from the console developing business. But today, Sega still exists and focuses on software development for other systems. Ah, <sighs> memories. You know, Sonic the Hedgehog was the sole reason I wanted to get a little hedgehog. Turns out they're spiky and kind of poop a lot. Not the same. Number five is DivX. On June 8th, 1998, Circuit City and Ziffrin, Brittenham, Bronca, and Fisher, a law firm, released DivX, a new way to watch movies that would compete with DVD rental businesses. The idea was customers would purchase special DivX players and hook them up to the internet via a dial-up phone line. Yeah, because everyone used to like dial-up internet, the whole <laughs> That was the sound it used to make, it was horrifying. Then they could purchase movies for around four to five dollars from various stores and watch them in that player for up to 48 hours. If they wanted the film playable after that, they would have to call a hotline and pay an extra fee. But DivX movies were much poorer quality than DVDs and their players cost nearly twice as much. The format was discontinued almost exactly a year after it launched and DivX and its parent company, Circuit City, became the laughing stock of the consumer technology world. Bye player it's got a cool name terrible quality but a cool name number four is Jaguar Released on November 23rd, 1993, the Jaguar was the sixth and final video game console under the Atari brand name. Though a lesser system, the Atari Panther was supposed to come out first, the Jaguar's development was far ahead of schedule, so Panther was scrapped in order for Atari to release the most advanced console on the market at the time. And indeed it was, a 64-bit system that put 16-bit consoles like Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo to shame, or at least it would have if the Jaguar had been a success. The hardware and software were difficult to navigate for game developers, many of whom opted to make games for competing systems instead, leading to a library of only 67 games and abysmal sales. Atari was forced into a reverse merger with JT Storage in 1996 and its assets were quickly liquidated. Hey, sometimes you just need to keep it simple. Remember Pong? Look at how fun that is. Look at it. So fun to watch. Number three are WOW chips. The only real downsides to eating all the junk food that you want are of course the upset stomachs you'll likely receive and all the weight that you're likely going to gain. Well back in 1996, Frito-Lay, the maker of Lay's, Ruffles, Doritos, and Tostitos, wanted to do something about the latter downside and began offering WOW chips, which almost had no fat in them. But how did they accomplish this, you ask? Well, they swapped in Olestra, a fat substitute. Launching all across the United States in 1998, Frito-Lay saw sales rise over $400 million. And everything was great and they went on forever like that. No, if you paid attention to the title of this list, you know that's not true. It was short-lived as the following year, sales plummeted to less than half that. Turns out eating too much Olestra caused abdominal cramping, diarrhea, and a little side effect called anal leakage. So consumers turned away, which left the company scrambling to bring back the original chips. <laughs> oh God, sorry, I just was thinking about what I just said. It's really, Really gross. Just enjoy regular chips, folks, just in moderation. Number two are Trump steaks. In August of 2006, Donald Trump registered a US trademark called Trump Steaks. Nine months later, on May 8th, 2007, his line was officially launched, offering top quality meat cuts, including burgers, sausages, and the world's greatest steaks. Trump was very proud of his new products, promoting it on the show The Apprentice, and even appearing on a home shopping channel. But the steaks were a colossal flop, barely selling any at all. 
The reason for the failure? Trump decided to only offer the stakes for purchase at the Sharper Image, a consumer electronics and lifestyle product store where nobody shopped for fine foods. So Trump's stakes were pulled from the shelves less than two months after their launch, and the Sharper Image went bankrupt the following year. Okay, that sounds like a really, really odd business decision. Who's gonna go into a store and be like, uh, I want a blender, and I also want, ooh, a steak is a good combination. And number one are male DVDs. Back in the year 2000, Netflix was just a small blip on the radar compared to the online streaming powerhouse it is today. And that's probably why Blockbuster CEO John Antioco passed on purchasing the company that year, a move that probably still keeps him up at night. At the time, Netflix was a DVD mailing company that was seeing a moderate amount of success. Instead of paying $50 million that the Netflix CEO Reed Hastings requested, Blockbuster launched its own DVD mailing service in 2000. 2008, but it was too little too late and the division was crushed by both Netflix and Redbox, who essentially owned the market. They lost over $1.2 billion in 2010 and Blockbuster was forced to file for bankruptcy. The very last store closed its doors on November 9th, 2010, the final rental being This Is The End. Well that's appropriate and now I'm gonna go Netflix and chill. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So those were 10 failed products that almost ended big companies and actually ended a couple of them. But if you guys enjoyed this, remember to give it a big thumbs up and also be sure to subscribe to my channel and be sure to turn on notifications by clicking the bell beside the subscribe button so that you never miss a thing because I release new videos all the time. Thank you guys and I will see you next time. Goodbye now.